In this video, we will discuss dynamic equilibrium and the Chatelier's principle. These are your learning targets. Now, throughout the year, we've talked about many different types of reactions. Synthesis reaction, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, combustion, oxidation reduction. We just finished talking about neutralization reactions. And typically, when you think about a reaction, you're thinking about reactants forming product. Well, most of these chemical reactions are actually reversible. So when I say reversible reaction, I'm talking about reactions that can go in either direction. It can go from reactant to product, reactant forming product, or product going back to reactant. And you know that this is a reversible reaction because when you're looking at a chemical equation, you're going to see a double arrow. And a double arrow might look like this, or it might look like two half arrows, one pointing to the right and one pointing to the left. If it's pointing to the right, this is your typical normal reactions. We say that the reaction is going forward, that reactant is forming product. Now, when the, reaction, uh, when the arrow is pointing backwards, we're talking about a backward reaction where product goes back to reactant, okay? So this is constant. So a reversible reaction means that it can go in either direction. Now, I'm not saying all chemical reactions are reversible, but most of them are. And reversible reactions tend to reach a state of equilibrium in a closed system. So what's a closed system? It's like this picture on the top right of the screen. Okay? A closed system means that there's no exchange of matter. There's only exchange of energy. And it occurs with chemical reactions, and it can occur, it can occur with phase changes. Right? For example, if you're boiling water, uh, that's and, and the top is on the pot of water. That is a closed system. So as you boil the water, it's going from liquid to gas. It's evaporating, but at the same time, it's going um, back from gas to liquid. So that's condensation. So that is a also uh, reaching dynamic equilibrium. Okay, so a reaction is at dynamic equilibrium when the rate at which reactants our reactant to form product becomes exactly equal to the rate at which products are converting back to reactants. So remember what rate is. Rate is speed. So we can think of it as the speed of the forward reaction is equal to the speed of the backward reaction. So again, forward reaction meaning uh, reactant to product and backward reaction meaning product to reactant. This is where the speed is constant. Okay, Speed is equal. So if, you have, if you're having a hard time trying to understand what that means, think about running up an escalator that's going down. Now, how many have actually, how many of you have actually tried to do this? I bet most of you who are listening to this video, right? So imagine um, an escalator that's going down and you're trying to run up the escalator. Okay, so if you want to get back to the top floor, you have to run as fast as you can. But what if you want to stay at the middle of the escalator? You have to be going up the same speed as the escalator is going down, right? That right there is dynamic equilibrium. So I'm going to show you this video just to um, give you another visual of dynamic equilibrium. Imagine you are digging a hole. You got it? Imagine, as you are digging that hole, your friend is refilling it. If you are digging the hole faster than your friend, the hole gets larger. If your friend is filling the hole faster than you, the hole gets smaller. But if the two of you are working at the same speed, there would be no change to the size of the hole. The same concept can be applied to a reversible reaction. If the rate of the forward reaction, reactants to products, is the same as the reverse reaction, products to reactants, the reaction is said to be at equilibrium. This is called a dynamic equilibrium because both processes are occurring simultaneously, even though there is no overall observable change. Now, even though there's no observable change, I don't want you to think that the reaction stops or that things are complete. At a molecular level, things are still moving. If I take you back to the escalator example and I'm asking you, what do you need to do in order to stay in the middle of the escalator? Well, think about it. 
You're constantly moving, right? What happens if you just stop once you reach the middle of the escalator? Well, the escalator is going to take you down, okay? But in order to stay in the middle of the escalator, you are constantly moving your feet, you're probably moving your arms. The point is you are constantly moving as the escalator is also moving, okay? So that is what's happening at the molecular level as well. As well. Things don't stop, but things are constantly moving as the speed of the forward reaction is equal to speed of the backwards reaction. Now when we talk about reversible reactions at equilibrium, we write equilibrium expressions. Equilibrium expressions provide a quantitative representation of how far a reaction will proceed. So will it go nearly to completion? So will it favor products? Or will the reaction hardly proceed? So the reaction favors the reactants. In order to write the equilibrium expression, we're going to take a look at this example. It's just a general um, example of a reaction. The red letters, so J, K, L, M, represent coefficients, and then A, B represent our reactants, C, D represent our product. Equilibrium expressions are represented by K, E, Q, okay, so that's equilibrium constant, and we write it in this format. The uh, numerator are the products raised to its coefficients. Now remember what the brackets mean. Brackets mean molarity, okay, that way we are not writing any units when we set this up. And then on the bottom, the denominator, the, it's the reactants raised to its coefficients. Now the equilibrium constant is different for every reaction. It is constant for a particular reaction at a particular temperature, but if you change the temperature, then the equilibrium constant changes as well. And you will go more into that when you take AP chemistry, if you take AP chemistry. So let's take a look at example one. Write an equilibrium constant expression for the following balanced chemical equation. So we're going to start with our product, because remember, that's what you put in the numerator. So we put carbon dioxide in brackets, and then that is raised to the third power because the coefficient 3. Water in brackets raised to the fourth power, and then the denominator, C3H8, times O2 raised to the fifth power. And that's it. Now, before we get into example number 2, let's look at the simple rule. We do not consider pure solids and pure liquids in equilibrium constants because concentrations of pure solids and pure liquids do not change as the reaction proceeds. So we are only considering aqueous and gas substances. So if we take a look at this, we see that ammonia is in the gas state, water is a liquid, ammonium is aqueous, hydroxide is aqueous. So how are we going to write this equilibrium constant expression? I'm going to take the product and put it in the numerator, and we're going to write all of it, okay? Everything that we see, NH4 plus OH minus, and then the de denominator, we're going to write ammonia down there, but we're going to leave water out of it because in this example, water is a liquid. Whereas the previous example, when we did water, water was a gas. Now, if we are given the initial concentration, so the molarities of each substance, we can use the equilibrium expression to determine how far the reaction will proceed and in which direction. So which side of the reaction is favored? Is it the product that's favored or is it the reactants that are favored? So if the products are favored, the reaction go, almost goes to completion. And then if the reactants are favored, then the reaction hardly proceeds. So if K is much greater than one, K meaning your equilibrium constant, then the reaction favors product formation at equilibrium. The reaction goes nearly to completion. If K is much less than 1, the reaction favors reactants at equilibrium, and the reaction hardly proceeds. So let's take a look at our example. We are going to calculate the equilibrium constant now that we are given the concentrations. So we're going to first start with our equilibrium expression. And we are going to go ahead and plug in our numbers. So you'll notice that I did not write M here because again, the brackets take care of that, okay? The bracket tells us that we're talking about molarity, so I'm gonna leave that out of it. I simply plug in the numbers, use your calculator, and you should get an answer of 0 0.0014. So what does this mean about the equilibrium position? Well, K is much less than one. 
So the reaction favors reactants at equilibrium. Go ahead and pause the video and work out the next example. And you should get an answer of 14. So K is much greater than one, so reaction favors products at equilibrium. To help you remember which one goes with which, um, this is actually how I remember it as well. You see that the K is greater than one. It's pointing to the right, which means that it's pointing towards the product. So you think of that as it favors product formation. Whereas when K is much less than one, it's pointing to the left, I think of it as it's pointing to the reactant. So the reaction is going to favor reactants at equilibrium. Sometimes a stress might be applied to a system, a system is a reaction, at equilibrium. And so what is a stress? A stress is any kind of change in a reaction at equilibrium that will upset that equilibrium. So what are some examples of stress? Increasing the concentration or decreasing the concentration. Uh, so adding more of something or taking away something. Heating something up or cooling it down, so increasing the temperature or decreasing the temperature, or a change in pressure, okay? Increasing pressure or decreasing pressure. So just like when you get stressed, you want to do whatever you can to get to get rid of that stress, right? And so according to Le Chatelier, Le Chatelier's principle states that if a stress is applied to a system at equilibrium, to a reaction at equilibrium, the reaction proceeds in the direction that relieves the stress. So this reaction will also do whatever it can to relieve the stress. So we use Le Chatelier's principle to predict how changes in concentration, temperature, and pressure will affect equilibrium. Let's first take a look at concentration. Increasing the concentration of reactants in a reaction at equilibrium results in the reaction shifting right, shifting right meaning moving the reaction forward and proceeds towards the products, which results in the formation of more product molecules. So think about it a little bit. If we are now adding more reactants to the reactant side, think of it as the reactant side is more stressed and so the reaction is gonna do whatever it can to relieve that stress. So it's going to push a lot of the reaction towards the opposite side. So it's gonna push it to the right, meaning pushing it forward, reacting to product. Increasing the concentration of products in a reaction at equilibrium results in the reaction shifting left, meaning it, it goes backwards, so product to reactant, proceeds and proceeds towards the reactants, which results in the formation of more reactant molecules. So I'm going to use this as an example. This is cobalt 2 hydroxide, and we're gonna add hydrochloric acid to it and it forms cobalt two chloride and water. So as you can see, this is a reversible reaction. At equilibrium, this reaction is a purple color, okay? And if we have more of the reactants, then the color will turn pink, like you see here on the right. And if it has more of the product, then it'll turn blue or really dark purple, which is on the left side of this picture here. So if we put stress on the reactant side, then the reaction will shift, the equilibrium will shift to the right and it'll move forward towards the product. If we put stress on the product side, then the reaction or the equilibrium will shift left and it'll go backwards towards the reactants. So for example, I'm going to show you a video where um, someone is demonstrating this um, this reaction. So if we add more hydrochloric acid, we are adding more reactants, right? We are increasing the concentration of hydrochloric acid. Well, it's there's lots of stress on the reactant side. So Le Chatelier's principle says, in order to relieve that stress, all of this, think of kind of think of it as there's too much on this side, so it pushes it shifts the equilibrium to the right, and it'll go that way to create more product. So let's take a look at this video to see if our prediction is true.
and watch what happens. You see the solution goes blue. If I stir it round, it's not fully blue, but it's gone a darker purple, a bluer purple. And if I keep adding hydrochloric acid, you can see a very intense blue colour there, eventually we will get to a complete blue. So as you can see, our prediction was right. If we add more hydrochloric acid, it'll shift the equilibrium to the right. It'll shift the reaction to the right to create more product, and that's why it turned blue. So now let's look, take a look at this. If we were to add more water, which is a product, which way will equilibrium shift? So think of it as there's too much, too much product, right, on this side. So Le Chatelier is saying it's going to do the opposite. So now that we have too much product, it will push everything to the left, and we are going to find that as it goes, the reaction goes backwards, we are going to create more reactants, so it will turn pink. So let's see if our prediction is correct. The amount of water in our system, just pour in some water, and straight away you could see pink and didn't take much water. We've already gone back towards the sort of purple color we started off with. and we're very So as you can see, what we predicted was correct. Let's take a look at this example. So here is our reversible reaction at equilibrium. If we increase the concentration of carbon monoxide, which way will the reaction shift? So think about it. There's too, too much reactants. Okay, so too much reactant, we're it's going to push it to the other side, right? It's going to push away, so it's going to make the reaction shift right. What if we take away water? Okay, so think of it as um, which side has more or which side is heavier because the equilibrium will shift away from the heavy side. So now if we take water away, technically this side is lighter, right? We took something away, the equilibrium will shift so that we are creating more product, okay? So here in this case, here's the heavier side, here's the lighter side, so the equilibrium will shift to the right. Now let's take a look at changes in temperature. The first thing that we need to go over is the difference between endothermic and exothermic. So remember the difference between those two? Endo means heat absorbed. Heat is part of the reactants, where exothermic is heat released, and heat or energy is part of the product. And so when you look at it in a reaction, for example, it might it's going to look something like this. Heat plus A plus B yield C plus D, right? So heat is part of the reactants. Heat, this can be energy. It could also be a numerical value, um, um, like delta H. It might say delta H is positive. Those are all hints that it's an endothermic reaction, okay? And so exothermic, um, heat would be part of the product. It might say energy on the product side, or they might say that delta H is equal to negative. Okay, so again, all hints, that's telling you that it's exothermic. So if you add heat to an endothermic reaction, the reaction shifts to the right. And so you're going to treat heat as if it is a substance. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to treat heat like it is a reactant. All right, and so if I increase the heat, think of it again as it's, too much on the le on the left side on the reactant side so according to Le Chatelier it's going to push everything to the right okay it's going to push the reaction to the right to create more product okay so when I show you this arrow up here I'm just indicating that it's going right or to the left okay equal room is going to the right or equal room is going to the left if you add heat to an exothermic reaction so now notice that heat is on is part of the product. If you add more heat, so then the product is too heavy, 
right? That's an, a, a way to think of it. Then the reaction shifts to the left, okay, to relieve that stress. Now, what if we were to take away the heat, meaning we were to cool it down? So for an endothermic reaction, if we take away the heat, remember this is the missing piece, okay? Le Chalier says it's going to do whatever it can to basically fill up that void, okay? Fill up that hole. And so for this, equilibrium will shift left. For exothermic reaction, if we take away heat, then it's on, it's on the product side, right? So that means the reaction will shift to the right towards the product when we cool something down, okay? So again, treat heat like it's a substance. Either it's going to be a reactant or a product. And just like we did with concentration, you're just going to think of it the same way. Now, for temperature, it's important um, that you know the difference between endothermic and exothermic because that will determine the equilibrium shift. So we're going to take a look at this example again. And you'll notice that I added heat to this reaction, and heat is on the reactant side, which tells us that this is an endothermic reaction. If we increase the heat, then what do you predict is going to happen to the equilibrium shift? It will shift to the right towards the product, and you would predict what color, or we'll see what color a bluish color, okay? What if we decrease the heat, meaning we cooled it down? Then the reaction will shift to the left towards the reactants and we will expect a pink color. So let's see if our prediction is correct. Purple solutions. And I'm gonna put one of my solutions in ice. So in it goes. I'm gonna leave one of my solutions at room temperature and in my third, uh, my third solution is going to go in water that I boiled a couple of minutes ago from the kettle. Let's see if we can spot any difference. So after about a minute, this is what we're going to see. Now, and if I take them out, Okay, the difference between the one on the left and the middle isn't that great, but the one on the right, you can see, has gone very blue. And what we predicted was correct. If we increase the heat, the equilibrium sh will shift to the right and we'll get a blue color, which happened up here in the test tube. And then if we cool it down and we put it in ice, then equilibri equilibrium will shift to the left and we will get a pink color. The last stress we're going to talk about is pressure. And remember that pressure has to do with gas molecules. When gas molecules collide with each other in the walls of the container, it creates pressure. So if you increase the pressure in a gas reaction, the reaction shifts towards the side with fewer moles of molecules. So take a look at this example, nitrogen and hydrogen produce ammonia. These are all gas molecules. And how do you determine the number of moles? Well, remember, you're just looking at the coefficients. So here we have one mole of nitrogen and three moles of hydrogen to give us a total of four moles of reactants. Whereas on the product side, in this case it's just ammonia, we only have two moles. So if you increase the pressure for this reaction, the reaction shifts toward the side, towards the side with fewer moles of molecules. So which way will re the reaction shift for this example? If you said it shifts right, you're absolutely correct it's going to shift towards the side with the fewer moles, which in this case is two moles. So if you decrease the pressure in a gas reaction, the reaction shifts towards the side with more moles of molecules. So again, looking at this example, which way would the reaction shift? It, it would shift left towards the side with the more moles of molecules. Now, if there's the same number of molecules on both sides, so if it was, for example, four moles of reactants and four moles of product, well, if you increase or decrease the pressure, it has no effect on the reaction. And keep in mind that this only applies to gases. And what happens if you add a catalyst? Well, nothing. Remember, a catalyst simply speeds up the reaction. It will have no effect on the equilibrium shift. Now let's take a look at an example. We're going to look at the reaction nitrogen and hydrogen forming ammonia 
and this is a reversible reaction. It's at equilibrium. This is an exothermic reaction. We know that because heat is part of the products. And we are going to predict which way the reaction will shift. Will it go right towards the products or will it go left towards the uh, reactants? And then we're going to see how that's going to affect the concentration of each of the substances. Okay, so if we take a look at nitrogen, if we add more nitrogen, the reaction will shift to the right towards the product. And when it shifts towards the right, the product will increase and the reactants will decrease. And that's why here you see that hydrogen decreases and ammonia increases. So again, these brackets mean concentration, right? So we're saying that ammonia's concentration will increase while hydrogen will decrease. And nitrogen, we're leaving it blank because that's what we are changing, okay? So let's take a look at ammonia. If we add more ammonia, which way will the reaction shift? The reaction will shift left towards the reactants. So if it's going towards the reactants, what will increase? The concentration of all of my reactants will increase, right? And so we're going to write increases for both nitrogen and hydrogen. This is another way to look at it. So if we say that it's shifting to the right, the reaction is shifting to the right, and we're going to imagine an arrow sh uh, pointing to the right, wherever it's pointing to, well, that's going to increase. And the tail of the arrow, that's going to decrease. And then if we say it's going to the left, the arrow is pointing to the left, uh, to the reactants, then all the reactants will increase, and then whatever um, is a product would decrease. Okay? So let's do the next one. If we take hydrogen away, okay, if we take hydrogen away, so what? how would the reaction shift? Right, it's going to go left, right? Because again, it wants to kind of fill, fill up that void or fill up that hole that we made, right? So it's gonna to shift to the left and my reactants will increase while my product decreases. What if I remove ammonia? If I remo remove ammonia, the reaction will shift right and all of my reactants will decrease. What if I heat this up? If I increase the temperature, so I'm adding more heat. Remember, you're going to treat this like a substance, okay? So if we add more heat, then the reaction will shift to the left and all the reactants will increase and the product will decrease. What if we decrease the pressure? So what do we have to do for pressure? You have to add up the total number of moles on the reactants and the total number of moles on the product. So here we have one mole plus three moles, so that's a total of four moles. On the product side, we have two moles, okay? Heat does not count, so we're not giving that a mole, right? And so here we have four moles and two moles. Well, if we decrease the pressure, which way would the reaction shift? It would shift towards the higher number of moles, so it's going to go left. And then both the reactants will increase and the product will decrease. Let's take a look at these three, or this example, hydrogen, oxygen, form uh, HI. And we see that delta H is positive, so what does that mean? It means that it's an endothermic reaction. So go ahead and pause the video and try to answer these questions and go ahead and play the video when you're ready. So explain what happens to the reaction when HI is removed. When HI is removed, the reaction will shift to the right. And as it shifts to the right towards the product, there will be a decrease in concentration of the reactants. Explain what happens to the reaction when the reaction is cooled. Remember, this is an endothermic reaction. So the reaction shifts to the left towards the reactants. There would be an increase in concentration of the reactants and a decrease in concentration of the product. Explain what happens to the reaction when increasing pressure. So did you add up the total number of moles? 
we have one mole plus one mole, so that's a total of two moles, and two moles of product. So what do we do? Or which way does the reaction shift? Two moles and two moles are equal, so pressure has no effect on this reaction because it's the same number of moles on both reactants and product side. And that's it for equilibrium and Le Chatelier's principle.